And they're both quite autobiographical poems. You feel that this did happen to Tony Harrison and that that really was his father. Might not have been, but I think it was. So um, I want to focus on the, the voice created, again, a sort of a general character. It's this teacher. So I suppose it's a specific one character, but he represents all the people that would put Harrison down, and put ordinary people down, teachers and um, people um, carrying out this cultural domination. But it's not a, it's not an individualised teacher, like it's not characterised, you don't get to know them, you don't feel any sympathy for them or even any lack of sympathy for them. They're just a kind of faceless, nasty creature. A bit like me on this video. <laughs> I was just laughing at my own jokes. Okay, someone's got to. So, four words only. I'm going to go in here of my heartaches. And mine's broken, you barbarian TW. He was nicely spoken. Can't have our glorious heritage done to death. So, that's the way he's characterizing this dominating cultural force. Um, that that puts Tony Harrison down for the way he's speaking um, and, and gives him these sorts of comic roles to play, like the drunken portrait of Macbeth. But that disguises the fact that um, the art of ordinary people and the art of people who don't speak in this way has in a way been, been stolen, been culturally appropriated that, um, you know, Keats was a cockney, but if you study Keats now, you've got to pronounce it in RP. You can't pronounce it in cockney. It's That's wrong. I do apologise for saying cockney in such a funny way. Um, so, poetry is a speech of kings. So you might write about this, um, this voice, which is, um, I want to say, telling, admonishing him. It's a posh word for telling him off. Um, it's very clipped, very assured, very confident, um, very hard to fight back. You're one of those Shakespeare gives the comic bits to prose. All poetry has been dubbed into RP. We've stolen it all. Uh, please believe us, your speech is in the hands of the receivers. We've taken it. We receive pronunciation people have taken your speech from poets who spoke like you and we've had your culture and now you have to pronounce it and think about it the way we do. So certainly that's not what the teacher would say, but it's what the teacher would mean. It's Harrison's views. This is a complicated poem. So if you've got your head around a bit of it, it's a really good one to write about. Um, so, just rem so I just wanted this sort of off-stage, undescribed character um, as a representative of that kind of cultural force, really putting people down and telling them that who they are is wrong and that their art is wrong and how they want to express themselves is wrong. Um, and that's the first half. And then the second half is this rebellion yeah rebellion so right you buggers then it's a rebellion to have that in the poem isn't it we'll occupy your lousy leasehold poetry you know we'll come and get it back thank you very much and um it's a kind of playfulness isn't it it's not a savage outright anger it's a kind of knowing ironic anger so um Oh, look what I did. I dropped the initials. You know, he kept calling me um, TW. Well, I, I'm not having that anymore. And um, I used my name and my own voice and spoke the way I wanted to. And look, I went mad and I ended sentences with prepositions. <laughs> so it's not the most um, savage, angry poem. It's a more ironic playful um with annoyance in there i'm not saying it's got no annoyance but you've got to get that tone that sort of playful tone in there lines like r-i-p r-p r-i-p t-w that's just such a good line i'm tony harrison 
no longer one of you. So I'm getting my identity back. And he gives his justification here. Hopefully you've got all that written over again. You know, people have said, oh, his, his rebellion completely fails. Um, I'm saying don't go mad with that. Like, so, you know, the first time that it's like they've still got their claws in him, they're still going to call him what they want to call him. They want him to be Anthony Harrison. They're going to name him. They're in charge of the of what people get called. But it, it it's almost a joke-like ending. You know, I went through all this and they still call me Anthony. But it was only once. You know, it's part of this this light humour, irony, playfulness, but meaning it really anyway. So good luck with writing that. Um, key points, I suppose, the, the being put down and the rising back up. The anonymous, powerful thought control and um, the playful, satirical... Mm, some sort of anger in their voice back. So if we move to just look at uh, marked with D, another person, another character who's um, been controlled. So Harrison's focus is on the impact. Um, so it's not really on where art normally focuses, is on the rich. It's on what it's done to the minds of ordinary people. What did it do to the mind of his father? Um, England made him feel like some dull oaf and that silenced him. He hungered for release from mortal speech. He didn't feel confident. Um, it kept him down. His tongue weighed like lead. Um, that's how he lived his life, with, without confidence that Har Tony Harrison has managed to, to become uh, you know, more literate literate than the literati you might say you're more middle class than middle class people mm. he's managed to get the code but his father never did and and just felt stupid marked with d for dunce um so i mean it's an extraordinary poem isn't it to imagine your father burning um and yet it's not sad it's not sad for his father's death it's it's not sad for his father's cremation it's sad for his father's life and how he was weighed down with feeling inadequate and that's what he'd been told. So his his cold tongue in that crematorium bursts into flame. Great, finally he can speak, he's free, he's got a powerful voice. No, only literally, literally his tongue bursts into flame but he didn't learn to speak. And these last four lines act as a summary. Um, so it's a sonnet, nearly, it does, it normally the last two lines, but this is a 16 line sonnet, sonnet, so the extra two lines are here. The baker's man that no one will see rise, and England made to feel like some dull oaf, is smoke, enough to sting one person's eyes and ash for one small loaf. He's been reduced, he's put back in his place, he's been baking bread all his life, now he is the size of a loaf. Um, one of the little people. And this is the impact of that teacher and people like them in Them and Us and the people that dwarf people with their signs in V and the, the, the stout upholders of our law and order. This is the impact of it. And it's in this autobiographical poem. Okay, so I'll stop there. And um, tomorrow I'll do the... Um, I was going to do the beginning and end of the Doll's House and the um, Lind Krogstad get-together. Oh, goodbye. <laughs>